Hi, my name is Mike Smolinski, and I'm the managing editor of Neurology Now magazine, your trusted resource for brain health. Neurology Now is published by the American Academy of Neurology and Walters Kluwer Health. We're here at the seventh annual Parkinson's Disease Therapeutics Conference, sponsored by the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research and the New York Academy of Sciences. With me is Dr. Michael Schwarzschild of Massachusetts General Hospital. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Schwarzschild. My pleasure, Mike. Um, my first question is, what area of Parkinson's disease research do you focus on in your work? Uh, our, our work uh, tries to span from understanding the biology to uh, bringing improved therapies to the clinic. So it, it's, it quite, is quite translational. I, I suppose if we had a unique niche, it's in pursuing relatively, uh, relatively neglected epidemiological clues, that is findings about people, uh, what in the general population is linked to the development of Parkinson's disease that we've tried to pursue both into the laboratory into the laboratory uh, and animal models of Parkinson's disease and when it's appropriate into the clinic like we've been able to do with, with one or two examples. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the topic of your presentation here today? Uh, we, we covered uh, the reporting of the recent results of a phase two trial called SHORE PD. Um, uh, investigating the, the potential of developing inazine, uh, which is a building block for, for a na an endogenous antioxidant in us called urate, mm -hmm. uh, the ability for inazine to be safe and well tolerated and uh, pursued further as a possible disease modifying therapy for the disease. Uh, would you summarize a few of the main points of your talk for our audience? Sure. Um, I'll start with, with just one background point that we are looking at the uh, at inazine, a building block for urate, because it turns out that urate is a promising potential uh, neuroprotectant in Parkinson's disease based on an unusual convergence of biological, uh, uh, clinical, and epidemiological data. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, information we have from humans as well as from the laboratory uh, that's led us to, to begin to ask whether inazine as a therapy that could elevate urate, potential neuroprotectant, would be uh, suitable for a full disease modification trial, a so-called phase three trial. So this phase two trial uh, uh, randomized uh, 75 uh, people with newly diagnosed uh, Parkinson's disease, not yet treated, mm -hmm. uh, to one of three groups, um, either a placebo or a low or moderate dose of inazine with the goals of seeing whether the treatment would be safe uh, and well tolerated as well as to sort of prove the principle of target engagement. In this case, the, uh, the idea that if we give inazine, we could actually elevate levels of its metabolite, mm -hmm. this antioxidant, in blood as well as in cerebral spinal fluid that bathes uh, the brain. And uh, so, and what we found was that it turns out, at least for the year and a half, that the 75 subjects uh, were in the tr trial, that uh, inazine was quite well tolerated uh, and it was very safe with no adverse, serious adverse uh, effects any greater in the treatment groups with inazine than in the placebo group. The one other safety area that we paid particular attention to uh, were the known risks of high levels of urate, also known as uric acid, mm -hmm. which include gout and certain kind of kidney stones. Uh, Basically, we have high levels of uric acid in the first place because we lost the ability to, to metabolize it, presumably because it's doing something good. But that's, that leads to uric acid or urate circulating at about the limits of solubility. So if it comes out of solution and crystallizes, for example, in a joint, a joint it can lead to gout, and in uh, kidneys it can lead to kidney stones. So uh, we happily found that uh, despite elevating urate, uh, there was no cases of gout, uh, and we were reassured about that. And uh, there were a few cases of kidney stones, one of which uh, contained uric acid crystals, and uh, we think uh, it's likely from the treatment, uh, but we, uh, it, was, it was very rare. And from the other information we learned in the trial, we're very hopeful of being able to minimize further the risk of stones, which, which were reversible in the case of the 
of the few uh, subjects who develop them. And then lastly, in terms of the main outcomes, uh, we were using inazine, which is not uric acid, but a precursor, and we wanted to test whether, in fact, it, it, this treatment could, in Parkinson's patients, elevate uric acid levels or urate in the blood and spinal fluid, and it very clearly did to the exact levels we were targeting in blood and significantly also in the spinal fluid of patients. So those are really the main outcomes mm -hmm. and important steps for uh, deciding whether we can now move this therapy to the next and fuller phase clinical development uh, to test whether it will slow down the disease. Th that was my next question is, so, you know, will you be continuing then with this line of research and, and what is the, the next stage um, for, the, for, you, for you and your team? We've met with the Food and Drug Administration and uh, they too uh, uh, agreed that, um, that we are ready for that next uh, stage in terms of safety data. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very reassuring, as I said. So the next step, uh, likely for us, would be a phase three clinical trial that would uh, enroll a larger number of subjects to track them, not only continue to track them for any safety issues, but also to see whether over really months to years the disease progresses more slowly in patients who receive inosine and have an elevation in their urine levels. And how will people be able to find out about um, that clinical trial, you know, when it, when it finally, if it's, it's at the point of recruiting? Sure. Well, we, we very much want to get the, the word out uh, with any clinical trial. It's a little easier than it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a number of, of ways in addition to talking to one's own uh, health givers, but clinicaltrials.gov is a fairly complete uh, source for the, in this country and uh, 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 Michael J. Fox Foundation's uh, Fox Trial Finder is particularly patient friendly, friendly for finding about what's finding out about upcoming and ongoing clinical trials that are particularly well suited to individuals and their, their own um, uh, stage of the disease and interests.